you are an unceasing spiritual being created to live in friendship with God forever. That helps us understand the intimate relationship with God because when we start talking about hearing God and receiving guidance and so on, we're very likely to lose the main point about friendship, and that is that communicating with God is not always or primarily a matter of being told what to do. And for many people, they cannot progress in their relationship with God because they're just thinking in terms of being told what to do. Now, being in the will of God requires that you go beyond that. Uh, Jesus told a story about a person uh, who had a servant, and the servant was out in the field working. And uh, when the servant came in, uh, the master asked him to prepare a meal, and and the servant would eat later. Uh, and he made a, st a stunning statement there. He said, you know, if, if your servant does what you tell him to do, you don't thank him. And he says, so you likewise, if you only do what God tells you to do, say, we are unprofitable servants. Do you remember that? Think about it now. If you only do what you're told to do, you're an unprofitable servant. Who is a profitable servant? A profitable servant is someone who knows what needs to be done and does it without being told. Right? Now that fits in with Jesus' statement about you are my friends because you know what I'm doing. I call you my friends because you understand what's going on. That's the picture of a co-worker, not of a servant who stands around waiting to be told what to do. Your wants and your desires are important in God's plan for you. And in general, in human relations also, things are beginning to, go, to get what, to be what they ought to be if you have people who don't need to be told. And I like to illustrate that, as I do in the book, Hearing God, by talking about our children, John and Becky. And when they were small, if they were playing in the yard or getting into the peanut butter in the kitchen or whatever, uh, they were certainly in our will, though we weren't telling them what to do. And that's crucial in coming to understand the nature of our friendship and intimate relationship with God. We are, of course, talking, listening. There are times when we're told what to do. And that's perfectly all right. That's a good thing. We should expect it when it's appropriate. And I believe that God will provide it. But we are not in the relationship of simply a master and slave. Not in that relationship. Now, interestingly, Paul and some of the other apostles call themselves slaves of Jesus Christ. But that slavery is on the other side of friendship. You've already gone through friendship to get to that kind of slavery. That is the kind of service that makes God's will and His purposes, what Christ is doing in the world, makes that primary, but it is not something that you're driven to. It is something you are drawn to. You are drawn to by the goodness and beauty of all that is in God and in His creation and in His world. And in that relationship, we experience complete service as free people under someone who respects our wants and our wills 
and refines them and helps us become the individuals that he wants us to be. You know, the only real individuals are saints. And when you get to know them, you find they're no, they're no two alike. Sinners are boringly similar. And uh, it's so depressing to see that scene, uh, you, predictable, uh, because there's nothing of uniqueness in what they're living for. They're living for themselves. They're living for their wants without reverence to God. They're enslaved to their desires, and the world has a hold of them and is pressing them into a mold. And they're all very, very, very similar. And all you have to do is watch a little television to see how similar uh, they are. But the saints are unique because God has shaped their wants and their wills. As the Psalm, Psalm 37 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And I think there's a pleasing ambiguity in that phrase because He actually does give you desires in the sense that He shapes your impulses, what you're ready to do, what you want, so that they match up with His. And that's where that saying I give you comes in, uh, where I say that God is developing us. His intent for us is to come to the place to where He can empower us to do what we want. And then He works on the other side, the object of the desire, and gives us the desires because He's already given us the desires for what we desire. And so now then, that is a unique combination that makes every individual living in the conversation with God to be something no one else has ever seen. 